LA Noir is the first 3D vision ready game that I've tested in this series, so as you'd expect, the 3D is pretty good. There is one small catch, you have to play the game in DirectX 9 mode. Knowing that information, I instantly switched it to DirectX 11 and loaded it up and the results are kind of weird. I'll tell you what, since I'm a nice guy, flick through the video to 8 minutes 13 seconds and you'll see it in that mode. However, for most of this video I will be playing it in DirectX 9, I think there's enough scaring people off playing games in 3D as it is. Well, it's made by the same people who made Grand Theft Auto and it's quite apparent when you're driving around the cities. However, I find it far more boring to drive around cities in this game. The game includes the best facial animations I've ever seen, though it's kind of important since it is a whodunit mystery where you have to go around interrogating suspects, finding clues and ultimately bringing the person to justice, which is what I'll be doing in this video. Don't worry, it's just the first mission so it won't spoil too much. Don't worry, I don't drive like this in real life. This game suffers from Grand Theft Auto Syndrome, which is something I've come up with where whoever plays the game, no matter how innocent, they will ultimately end up killing lots of people. I don't think I've even completed Grand Theft Auto 4 yet and I've had it for years and I enjoy playing it, but every time I have a mission I can't help but just steer into the police station or run over that woman on the side of the road or whatever. It's only with Rockstar games. Anyway, back to the 3D. As you can see, the viewpoints are quite far apart. So unlike other games where they're only 3D when things are right up close to your face, in this you can see the 3D through the car window, the HUD is obviously 3D, and nearby props and lights and people look quite 3D as well. Obviously that's the main reason why I'm running about like a loony. Anyway, here we are at the first crime scene. I can't see any problems with the 3D so far. Smoke seems to be the right distance away. Lights are where they're meant to be. People are where they're meant to be. Remember that when you see it in DirectX 11 mode at the end of this video. And everything looks pretty good. Now you'll need quite a beefy PC to run this in 3D. My old computer, a GeForce 8800, wasn't able to do it at all. In fact, it struggled with 2D mode with everything on high. Though if this game is anything like Grand Theft Auto 4, it's more to do with your CPU speed than anything else. If you have a decent quad core, you should be able to run this, provided your graphics card is up to scratch. This game is based on the Rage engine, the same as GTA 4 and GTA 5. Rage stands for Rockstar Advanced Game Engine. Don't mistake it for the game Rage, which actually runs on the ID Tech 5 engine. So if this a game's anything to go by, when they release GTA 5 on PC, yep that's right, it's not a case of if but when, the 3D in that game should also be very good. The only problem I have with LA Noir is that once you've played the level and you know how it ends, it's a bit boring to go through it again. Obviously this being the first one I've gone through it quite a few times and I know exactly where to go. However, just for the sake of 3D, I'm going to go up these steps. Anyway, in this crime scene someone was shot in the head and you're pretty much looking for clues, or in this case, the murder weapon. Now, if you've got very good eyesight, you might have spotted it already, but probably not, it was in the distance there. I'll just go down these steps again, I don't know why I went up, just spin around a bit. Okay, now let's just get on with this mission. I don't know if I'm helping you see the 3D or just giving you motion sickness by spinning the camera around like this, but I hope you get the idea behind the 3D and how good it looks in this game. I mean, you're probably just seeing it in the cross-eyed mode or with coloured glasses on, but proper active glasses make it look far better, and a lot more 3D as well, mainly because you're not being distracted by all the problems with other viewing methods. Ralph, there's something on the rooftop. How the hell did you see that? A reflection in the window. Looks like it might be our weapon. I'm going to see if I can find a way up there. All right. Anyway, I'm just going to skip forward a bit because I think you're going to get bored otherwise. You and your sidekick talk about what sort of person it could be. Actually, yeah, this is quite nice in 3D. The moment something gets closer to you than the monitor, the moment it goes off the side of the screen, it can be quite distracting. And thinking about it, the distance between the viewpoints in this game must adjust based on the scene. Whilst you're running around it's quite a long way apart, but when you're inspecting something like this, it must switch to another sort of view mode. So well done developers for taking the time to make it look nice for people with 3D glasses. Smith & Wesson, serial S71893. Two rounds fired, and instead of dropping it down a drain, our shooter hoists it up here. Interesting guy. He's not really that interesting. Anyway, so the next place we go is the gun shop. You don't care who gets in your way, do you? As you can probably see, it's a lot more difficult to run people over than in Grand Theft Auto, but it is still possible if you have enough patience and determination. Which I do, but not for this video. Oh, I like this. The other person must feel so hard done by. I think this is the first time I've managed to set a police car on fire in this game. In later missions, you do get punished for doing this, but in the first one, you're, you're allowed to tear up the whole city if you like. Thank you for your car. Now let's just run you over. That was a tax-paying citizen. You just bounced off the fucking hood, Bell. Oh no, 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 you did not just do that! Oh, for goodness sake, let's, let's just skip some more of this.
Officers Phelps and Dunn. Can you tell us anything about this gun? Smith & Wesson. Model 27, registered Magnum. I knew it. He was Chamber the killer. 357, nickel plated with pearl grips. I would like to see more of this guy because he seems quite interesting. I mean, he's law abiding and everything like that, but there's something about him I don't trust. What's interesting about how they made this game is that they recorded the face and the body separately. It was one of the drawbacks of the technology they used. Imagine how good it would have been if you could just simply get an actor and put them in the game. Complete body motions and all. On a slightly unrelated note, did you know that Gandalf cried when filming in The Hobbit? Since he's like twice the height of all the dwarves, he has to be in a green screen. And all the dwarves are represented by little pictures of the dwarves. And when a dwarf talks, the light flashes next to the picture. And obviously that's quite a lonely place to be as Gandalf. And apparently Ian McKellen did cry on set. His mic was on at the time and everyone could hear him sort of sobbing and going, Oh, I never asked for this. This isn't why I wanted to be an actor. And did you know that for the original Lord of the Rings, Sean Connery was approached for acting as Gandalf? I think he was offered up to 15% of all box office receipts or something, which would have been worth $400 million if he had taken the role. Apparently he didn't understand the script and probably wasn't too interested. And I have no idea why I'm talking about this. Anyway, I'm going to let my sidekick drive this time, I think that's probably wise. No more running over people for me. You drive. Gives me more time just to admire the 3D anyway. I really like the small talk they've got in the car. Rockstar's brilliant for things like that. And that wasn't so hard, was it? Just because we're in uniform doesn't mean we can't use our initiative. I guess so. Seems a little too good to be true. One of a kind murder weapon bought locally using the real name. If Schroeder's our shooter, he's no criminal mastermind. Most of them aren't, and that's why they get caught. Two out of every three crimes are done on impulse. Another fact from the Phelps Encyclopedia of Thin Air. You really are full of them. Maybe I've watched too many murder mysteries, but a case like this is so simple, I almost think there's got to be a twist or something. Anyway, so we're approaching the murder suspect's house. I'll do this quickly. Whoa! Easy! Oh, screw that, he lives at number two. What do you guys want? I'm Officer Cole Phelps. This is Officer Dunn, Wilshire Division. You're the owner of a Smith & Wesson Model 27, nickel plated with pearl grips? I might be. What of it? Then you'll be surprised to know that Scooter Payton was murdered tonight with your gun. You're out of your mind. Scooter, he works for me. I have that gun here in my drawer. What the fuck is going on here? You're under arrest, Schroeder. Cuff him, Ralph. No way. You're not taking me down for this. Now you see, this is how bad I am. Even at this point, I thought, well, maybe he's been framed and set up in some way. The real killer is actually clever enough to know how this guy will react to being arrested and knows that he'll respond with violence, making it look as though he's the real killer. But actually, he's innocent. But anyway, he isn't, and here's the fist fight. So there you have it, the first mission of L.A. Noir in 3D. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. The first mission in 3D in DirectX 11. Spot the difference. Dealing with corruption is like chasing shadows. You never know whether the guy you're talking to is on the path, or whether it's your partner. Or maybe even the watch commander. Yeah, that's right. It's a trippy experience and it's almost impossible to miss cars when you're driving past them. I'm going to shut up and let you watch some of the gameplay. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go ahead, Kate. Here we go again. They don't request uniforms for an evidence search unless there's some kind of catch. Ever the optimist. From the beam of sunshine himself. 